Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to look at how we can create an EA that can trade for us using the stochastic oscillator. So the stochastic oscillator, let's see an example of what we want this indicator or this expert advisor to do for us using this indicator. So we want this expert advisor to open a trade once this red line crosses above the greenish line and it's above 80 yes we want it to open a sell position and then we want it to open a buy position when the greenish line crosses above the red line and it's below 20 that's where we want it to open a buy position and then going back to the code we want it to close yeah we want it to close when just open it again we want the trade so in this case for the cell it must close once it has reached the 50.00 line once it touches and goes below so basically in this case of a cell it must be equals to or smaller than 50 and then the trade closes and then in the case of a buy it must be these two must be above or equals to the 50.00 line. That's how our trade will close. So that's a basic, simple, yeah, an easy expert advisor we want to create. Just something simple that we can test, you know, here and there. So let's get on to it. Again, at the start of this code, you can see that we have included the trade class. And then we have created an instance of this which we've called a trader and then we have defined the handle and here you see that we have the stochastic oscillator inputs so let's go and see what the stochastic oscillator has so you will see that a stochastic oscillator has a period k period d period slowing and price field right it also has the method either it can be simple this is the moving average. It's either going to use a simple moving average, an exponential moving average, a smooth moving average, or a linear weighted moving average. And then here, the price field, we can either choose the low high or the close close, right? So we want to get these inputs um, such that, and this allows the, the, the user to input these things themselves and choose if they want the period to be this or that or if they want to decide if it's going to be a close or um, in this case or even the exponential so that's what the input helps with it allows me to say okay i want it to be a linear weighted moving average so let's go back to it so we take in so basically in this case when you use this ea we give it a value of five in terms of the period, the K period, it has a value of five. The D period has a given value of three and the slowing has a given value of three, but it's an input, so you can change it. You can change it. Same with the stock method. In this case, it's a simple moving average. And then as well as the price level. In this case, it's a close close, but it's an input, so you can change it. I'll show you an example of that in a moment. And then we also want to input our lot size. We want to determine, or I want to be able to say, okay, I want the 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 lot size. And then again, I use this to check the, the, the current bar to see if it has completed for a trade to open. Then I have another Boolean and a position limiter. So again, if you have watched the RSI based EA, you see that I have used functions that open a trade close a trade and limit a trade, right? So this helps me to separate code. And um, basically, if I have a problem with opening and I see that my code is not opening, I know I can come to the function that opens a trade. Or if I see that my positions are not being limited to, let's say, five trades or 10 trades, then I can say, okay, the problem is by my trade limiter. Then, Looking at this right now, let's start with the trade opener. So again, we need arrays. So we need the main 
and the single because we have two lines. If you look there, we have two. One is the main line and one is the signal line. So this helps us to collect information of the or from the um, oscillator. So then we use copy buffer to get the information and store them in the respective um, arrays. And then again, we use the bars total. This allows us to only open a trade once the current bar has completed. So we don't want to open a trade um, whilst the, the price is moving. So if you look here, if you look here, price is always moving. So I'll just put this on the one minute time frame. So the price is always moving. So in this case, it might be slow, but it's going to move, right? So we don't want a trade to open when a movement happens. We want a trade to open once the current candlestick has closed, right? And then go back now. And then we also want a trade to only open if the boolean here, this, this trade is true. What does this mean? It allows us to limit the number of positions opened. So if we quickly go down to the uh, trade limiter, you'll see that the trade limiter equates itself uh, or trade limit equates itself to the position limiter. So this is defined by the user. In this case, I can say I want my, or I can define my position limited to be five. Basically, I want to limit my open trades to five. So this here checks the number of op or the total number of open positions. If it is that the total number of open positions is equals to the position limiter, then it will make the boolean false. And if the boolean is false, then this trade does not open. Bas yeah, so basically it does not open a trade if the boolean is false. It only opens a trade if the total number of open positions is smaller than the position limiter. Yeah, so that's how that works. So if the current bar has closed or finished and our trade boolean is true, then it will open a trade. But look at what it looks at. It looks at the current, the current value of the main line. And if the current value of the main line is smaller than 20 and the current value of the signal line is smaller than 20, remember, if it's smaller than 20, then we want a buy to open, right? And then also we are checking if the main line is above the signal line. If that is true, then we open a buy trade. So in this case, let's look at this here. So you can see that the main line is the greenish one and the signal line is the red one. In this case, the main line crossed over the signal line. That's where we open our trade. But remember, we're looking at it when it's below the 20.00 line. So in this case, the main line is above the signal line. Then the trade opens, right? Okay, perfect. We have established our buy. Now let's look at our sell. So our sell is the opposite. If our main line is above 80, and our signal line is above 80, the current value of the main line and the current value of the signal line. If they are above 80 and then the main line is smaller than the signal line, then we open a sell trade. So what does that look like? In this case, you can see the main line is below the signal line and it's above the 80.00 line. That's where our sell opens. Correct. That is it with our trade opener. Now, now let's look at the next function that closes a trade. Again, we define our array, use the copy buffer to take in the values. And then again, like I said, I want the cell position to close once the main line and signal line are at least equals to or below the 50.00 line. So in this case, the sell must close there and then the buy must close when the signal line and the main line are above or equals to the 50.00 line. So let's see how that looks like in code. So for us to close the trade, we check if the current value of the main line is smaller 
or equals to 50. Same with the signal. And then we check if the main line is above the signal line. Remember, remember guys, we're checking the current values, right? The current values of each. And if this is the case, then we will get our position and see or check if the current position is a cell. If it is a cell, then we will close the trade. Now, the same is with closing a buy, but it becomes the opposite. So now for the buy, we check if the current value of the main line and the current value of the signal line are above or equals to 50.00. And then we also check if the main line, the current value of the main line is smaller than the signal line, the current value of the signal line, right? So if that's the case, then it gets the position. And if the position is a type buy, is a buy trade or is a buy position, then we close the trade. That is how that works. Then I've explained the trade limiter. And then this is basically the stochastic oscillators handle. It takes in the symbol. So this looks at the current symbol, the current period, and then it takes in the stock um, K period, the D period, the slowing, the method, and the price level, right? And now, if you look at our on tick function, this is where everything happens. Since it's where the the price is always moving, we have put our bars. This here helps us to check when the current bar or the current candlestick is still active or when it's it has closed. And then here we have called our functions, right? We've called the open function. This opens the trade. This makes sure that we haven't surpassed our limit, trading limit. And this helps us to close the trade once we are satisfied or once it has reached the defined. Yeah. So in this case, it's this the 50. Once it has reached this, then it should close the sell. Once it has reached this, it should close the buy. Now let us test this out and see if it is working so i'll just compile to make sure that there are no problems with the code in this case yep there's no problems and then we will start debugging and then i'll just slow it down oh it's okay so it's actually slowed all right so it's approaching it should open cells okay it didn't open the cell because the close wasn't Proper. The candlestick didn't close above. That's all we want. We want the candlestick to close above whilst these two are still above the 80. Then the cell will open. And then the same thing with the buy. So let's wait a bit and see. So guys, there you have it. Do you see that the cross happened below the 20? And it only opens the trade once the current candlestick has closed. And also if it is below this. And in this case, it will open, it will close or it has closed because of the current candlestick was above the 50% or 50.0, right? Let's see if we can see more examples. Okay, let's open buy trades again. Um, this is the current candlestick. It should close soon. There we go. It closes. So that is it with this. Um, let's see a cell. It has closed. It went below the 50.00. So this here just looks at the crosses and you can see there's a lot of crosses. So when it goes above and it starts coming down, okay, in this case it has bought. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. The 50, you see, then past the 50, then it closes the buy. So that's, that's basically all it does. In this case, we've made $125. Already, so again, guys, this is not a strategy that I'm, I'm, I'm proposing or anything. This is just a basic way to say, okay, guys, you can create something if you have 
an indicator based strategy you can create something you know so yeah that is it so i'm just going to show you guys now that you can you can edit this so you look at the input so basically here we're looking at the stock based ea this is how i test my expert advisors so if you check here by the input you see it allows you to change the period so in this case i can make it 100 then i can make the d period 50 i can make the slowing 50 i can change it from a simple moving average to let's look at exponential then i can change it to close close and then there we go my lot size i can also change it to 0 0.1 and then i can change my position limited to 10 so so that it opens only 10 trades maximum right so that's how it works um, and then you can click start then it will start debugging again and showing you so you just click start and then you'll see it will start doing the whole thing and testing out or back testing the the strategy right so you can just make it go fast you see it opens a lot of trades <laughs> but yeah guys that is how it works um yeah and then I've done the same thing again. If you looked at uh, my previous video, the RSI based EA, you see that I did something similar to this, whereby I copied each snippet of the code and explained the purpose of each segment. So in this case, you would see the purpose of this part and then the purpose of declaring the inputs and variables. And you see the purpose of the trade opener function. It explains what it does and you also see basically you see the purpose of all the functions that I've created as well as the things in the on init function the on tick function as well so yeah guys again if you want this document please comment your email addresses on the comment section and then I will email that to you so yes that is all for this video guys thank you so much and have a great one